Hi, I'm Sarah Newbert. This is Steve, and this is Woven Upholstery Mending 101. I weave for a living. I think mending is my favorite sustainability practice. It's good for the earth. It's good for me financially because it's cheaper to fix things than it is to replace them. But it's also good for my soul. I find weaving to be really beautiful but also a mindful and a spiritual practice. It's a way to reframe our ideas about the things we own, and it also helps us bring more soul into our space. And I'm gonna talk about that more, but for now, let's jump into learning. This is Steve. He's really the reason why we're here. I got a couch, and it was a used one off of Craigslist, but it was in pretty good shape until this guy got a hold of it. Apparently, the upholstery was the perfect texture for his little claws. I just decided to apply what I'd learned about using weaving to mend clothing to bigger piece. And for some reason, it went viral and here we are. For this project, I've been repairing this super cute mid-century Broyhill chair. I just rescued it for free off of Craigslist. And actually I was surprised that it made it as long as it did. And I'm guessing that since you're here, it means that you've got a favorite piece of furniture that may be a cat or a dog or a rabbit or a kid or a glass of wine has ruined and you want to give it some new life. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So in this tutorial, we'll be learning how to use weaving to repair a damaged area of upholstery. This is a visible mend, meaning we're not trying to hide the fact that we're fixing the furniture. We are using the repair as a solution to fix the piece, but this is also a design choice. So that means that when we're done, not only will the repaired areas be the strongest parts of upholstery, but they will also be the most interesting and the most beautiful. Let's talk about the supplies that you'll need for this project. You'll need some really sturdy warp yarn. This is a linen yarn, but cotton or hemp works just as well. You just want something that's really strong and doesn't stretch. You'll also need a little tape measure, a curved upholstery needle, a long wooden weaving needle, and then you'll need something to mark your upholstery. If you have dark upholstery, I would recommend a white chalk quilter's pencil. If you have lighter upholstery, I'm using a disappearing ink fabric pen and a dark purple. And then you're also gonna need some scissors. Let's also talk about weaving yarns. This is a three-ply recycled cotton rope. I really like it because it's spun really tightly, which means it'll be very durable. And then I also have this cotton frizz ribbon that's also recycled. I think it's gonna hold up to animals playing with it really, really well. In terms of quantity, I would suggest buying about eight ounces of fiber for every square foot of mending that you're doing. So I'm going to show you from start to finish how to make a woven repair to this corner of the chair. It's just kind of frayed, needs a little bit of help. And the first thing that we're gonna do is attach the warp to the upholstery. We want to start by marking off where we're going to put the warp onto the upholstery. For this project, I'm gonna space the warp threads about a half inch apart. So we're gonna go well outside of the damaged area to attach our warp. I'm gonna start down here. I'm gonna start right at the corner and just begin marking every half inch. So I'm gonna come up a little bit. So I'll go directly up and I'm just gonna follow the grain of the fabric. Okay, I think that's good for this side. I think that'll cover the damaged area that I wanna cover. I have one right in the corner, you can't really see it, but it's there. And I'm gonna come one dot over, and that's where I'm gonna insert my needle. So when I'm putting my needle through here, I'm being really careful to only catch the fabric and not the stuffing underneath. Normally would mark up here too. I'm gonna freehand it just for today, but you might wanna do that when you're doing this work to actually mark up the top too. Okay, up over the corner, and then I'm going back down here. I'm gonna go to where I first sewed in my warp, and then I'm gonna come up through this next dot here. I'm gonna need a little bit more warp than this to get to the end of the section that I'm warping. What I can do is just pull some more yarn 
right off of that ball of warp. And then following the path of the warp, I'm just taking up all that slack. There we go. And so now I have a longer length of yarn to work with and hopefully can get to the end of the section. I'm actually going to be drawing a line. So when I'm warping up here, I'm still following the grain, coming up right there. And instead of going straight across here, I'm gonna go down this line. Continuing to follow the grain of the fabric, facing these about a half inch apart. And now that I'm doing the other side of this top, I am actually just using the same spot where the warp is sewn in so that the warps actually meet here at the top. I think that's all I'm gonna do for this corner. And now I'm gonna tie it off right here I'm just going to do a little just a simple knot around there. And now I'm going to start adjusting my tension and just taking up a little slack with every warp thread. Until I get to the end. So it's fairly tight, but it doesn't pull, pull on the upholstery and then just tie it off the same way that I did the other one. We're all warped and ready to weave. I'm ready to start weaving now. I have some rope threaded onto my long wooden weaving needle and I always weave from bottom to top. I'm gonna weave all the way around this corner. So I'm going under, over, under, over. all the way around. You can see how the yarn just kind of goes over, under, over, under. And then when I'm coming back this direction, I'm looking at what this last pass of yarn did and I'm gonna do the opposite. So I've done four back and forth passes of my weaving yarn. And so the next thing we need to do is make sure that we're actually attaching our mend to the upholstery. I'm gonna start by just looping it, I'm going under the upholstery, making a little loop around this first warp thread, and then just tying a knot here. And now, instead of just weaving across, I'm actually going to go under every other warp thread, but I'm also going underneath the upholstery. Now we're at our last one. And what I'll do here, come underneath, and then do it one more time to actually loop around this warp thread. I've gotten up to the level of this shape right here and what I want to do is come in with a new color and then I'll be joining them in the middle. I will go under that last warp. The nice thing about that is when you finish those two colors, if you wanted to come across the top of both of them with another color, these would be in a consistent pattern. And so it'll just look a lot neater. What I'm gonna do is just cross them over each other. So this one, they're crossed like this. And I'm going back this direction with the yellow and back this direction with whatever this color is. So that's how we start to join these. We go. And because I'm interlocking these consistently, it's just gonna be a nice, neat line all the way up. So I've gone about another inch. I went a couple more rows than I meant to, but that's okay. And now it's time to do another warp row. So the last time I went across, these overs were on these warps. And so now on this pass, the overs are gonna be on the alternating ones. I've been continuing to weave and I'm getting close to this corner right here, which means it's getting kind of tight as I'm weaving in here. Instead of putting my needle through down here, I'm doing it up here where I have a little bit more warp and I'm helping it along by lifting up every other warp thread with my finger. So it's a lot easier to just pull it through like this. Another thing, when you pull it through here, 
this can get caught on your warp thread. So you just kind of wiggle it through like that. So I'll continue to weave now and when we get to the point where the warps are meeting at the corner up here, we'll talk a little bit more about that. I'm just about to the point where I can't really squeeze any more rows into this spot right here. What you have to do is shove those ones down a little further than you actually want them. To make a nice neat corner, I'm gonna cut a new length of this same yarn and I'll be working two simultaneously so they'll be going towards each other here. <laughs> My fingers could do it. <laughs> so instead of continuing to carry this other one up the warp like I normally do with this tail, what I'm gonna do is stick the needle through, find my mend, then thread the needle, since this is such a short piece. Pull it through like that and just trim it. I'm coming in from here and we're gonna meet in the middle and we're just gonna do an interlock like we've been doing with our other sections, except we're going on a diagonal. I'm staying consistent right over left. And since I can't fit any more on the warp that's left right here, I'm just gonna start interlocking in this empty space. I'm not doing my warp rows up here because when it's on a curve, just the fact that it's on a curve is enough to really keep this nice and tight against your upholstery so you don't have to worry about that. The beautiful thing about yarn is it's very forgiving. So you can always kind of squish it around Get it to sit where you want it. Throw a piece of duct tape on the end of this. And we go to the very end. Okay, so we're just about to the end here. I'm using my needle to lift up the warp enough so I can grab this one and pull it through. So now I have this one. I've woven it as far as it can go. Just sticking that end under here. And now pushing this down further than I want it to sit just to give myself enough space to get the needle underneath the warp. Go under this last one, over this one, down in here. Squish those threads back into place. And I'll do the same thing with this one that I did with that other tail. I will come in and finish weaving the pink section. And I'll be doing the interlocking after the fact instead of while I'm weaving two colors simultaneously. And cut. So that's a complete repair on the corner here. how this little chair has turned out. I still have a little bit of work to do on it, but this whole process has just been so much fun. It has been a lot of work, but I've also learned so much and I'm so excited that I was able to give this little guy a new life. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've had fun. I really can't wait to see what you do. If you wanna share photos, videos of your process or your completed project, please do. I'm on Instagram at s. Dot Newbert. You can also use the hashtag woven mending and we can share, see what we're doing as a community and hopefully inspire other people to hop on this mending train, keep the furniture out of landfills and help other people invite some more creativity into their lives. If there's anything that you have questions about that I didn't cover in the tutorial, you can find me at my website, sarahnewbert.com. There's a contact form there. But most of all, continue to invest in your creativity. Continue to give yourself permission to play. Continue to ask questions. And as always, I love this community so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I wish you merry mending. Mm -hmm.